So you're good, happy? Perfect. So um, if you want to just start telling us a little bit about you. I was admitted into my first like psychiatric ward um, in the July of 2020. I think I've had six admissions over the last two years. I felt really isolated from my friends and from who I was. And that's when the self-harm got a lot more obvious and a lot more regular. It's clear that the online world is, is, is wild west. Indeed, it can trigger mental health problems. TikTok is, is an interesting example. Um, because of its popularity, because of its fun aspect, that can be more dangerous. Why was I sectioned in a psychiatric hospital? So I tried to show what illness can look like, um, like the reality of living with mental illness. There is a very fine line between glamorising mental health and telling the truth. TikTok is known as a social media platform for dancing and popular trends. I, mean, I was Josh Safdie's muse when he wrote on Kajal. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like things like. But that. its content has expanded to include everything from book recommendations to sex education. We have some new entries for how climaxing is described in other languages. And journalists reporting from the front line of war zones. Oh. And as young people in this country face a mental health crisis, they're turning to TikTok to talk about it. Reacting to my psych ward notes. Using the hashtag psych ward, TikTok users upload videos detailing diagnoses, treatment, and their journeys to recovery, as well as first-hand accounts of life on a psychiatric ward. It's a rare and candid insight into what it's like to live with severe mental illness. For some young people with mental illness, this is much more than just a trend. For 23-year-old Kat, struggles with her mental health dominated her teenage years. Anxiety, depression and self-harm led to her dropping out of school when she was 16. She returned to school, then moved away for university, but two years ago, lockdown happened and Kat's mental health deteriorated. Uh, I was living in a house by myself. Um, for like 10 weeks. I don't think I saw a single person for 10 weeks. Um, and from there, my mental health just completely declined. Um, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder the November before lockdown. After lockdown, I was admitted into my first like psychiatric ward um, in the July of 2020. And I was basically spent the last two years just going in and out of wards. So. I think I've had six admissions over the last two years. Kat started her TikTok account after her first hospital admission, and I wanted to understand what made her decide to share her story online. To have like, oh, I'm going to make these three videos today, it gave me a purpose and it gave me something to do, and also it kind of felt good that I could be helping other people because of the stuff I was talking about. For Kat, who now has over 20,000 followers on TikTok, Using social media to talk about her mental health has been central to her recovery. I didn't really speak about mental health. And then suddenly I've gone on to like TikTok where I've had like 100,000 people viewing my videos. So it did start more of a conversation. Hey guys, so I've got a bit of a life update for you all. Um... It's also nice to be able to talk about like my experiences on the internet and feel like I'm not alone. Like going to a mental health ward and being put on a section seems like such a big thing and it's so isolating and it's so nice to see other people on TikTok that have gone through that and you're like, oh, they're normal, they're living a normal life now and it just does give you a bit of hope. Kat's experience shows a glimpse of the positive impact online communities can have for people with mental illness. 
So I wanted to find out if the scientific research is aligned with the idea that social media could actually benefit people who struggle with their mental health. The University of Cambridge's Cognition and Brain Sciences Unit leads research on the impact that digital technologies, including social media, can have on our mental health. From what I've seen, the research is still quite limited when it comes to social media use and mental health, especially in clinical groups. It's still quite early, at early stages. Uh, social media platforms have started uh, to be open around like the year. 2007 uh, with Facebook for instance so it's not a lot of time and research always takes time. It seems that for clinical groups that is people with diagnosed mental illness like depression, anxiety and personality disorders the research into the impact of social media is lagging behind the fast pace of big tech and the social media platforms themselves especially newer ones like TikTok. But some research does exist, and one person we spoke to is looking to reframe the narrative around social media and mental illness. Social media can often serve as a venue for people to uh, seek support. Uh, some of the, the qualitative research that I've led, talking to people who have found you know, very powerful connections on social media with others uh, that have had very important benefits, um, such as feeling less alone, uh, finding information or you know, other kind of details about their condition. Um, also, uh, being able to share their challenges, you know, being able to talk about their challenges and then hearing from others who have had similar uh, types, of, uh, types of challenges. So I think that's a really powerful thing, knowing that you're not alone, uh, especially when it's a, very, it's a very frightening and very, uh, you know, it's very difficult to have a diagnosis like that or to have those types of symptoms. Um, so knowing that there's others out there and then being able to connect with them, I think that really can be also very empowering for individuals. For Kat, this access to online support and information is what makes the psych ward content on TikTok so valuable. I think if I'd have been able to watch my own TikTok like 10 years ago, then I maybe wouldn't, I don't know, I wouldn't, I can't say I wouldn't have had mental illnesses, but I might have had the courage to speak out about it a bit more, um, to realise that it is more normal. These two I did in my first ever admission um, and one of the staff there was obsessed with. I felt so like ashamed and so like a, an outsider because of like self-harm and like feeling depressed and all of that and I think that maybe if I'd have seen people talking about especially borderline because that is quite a, a stigmatized illness on TikTok when I was younger then maybe I would have known a bit more about it, I would have learned things about it. One of the TikTok creators using their platform to destigmatize and educate others about mental illness is 21-year-old Sasha. Sasha started self-harming when she was in her early teens, and a knee injury that prevented her from playing sports contributed to her mental health struggles. Um, that kind of like fractured my identity and I felt really isolated from my friends and from who I was. Um, and that's when the self-harm got a lot more obvious and a lot more regular and beyond my control because I feel like at the beginning it was a conscious decision but um, by this stage it's like I just could not stop um, yeah, self-harming. Sasha also experienced intense academic pressure in her teens, which led to a mental health crisis. I just couldn't really cope with the stress that I piled on myself, so I ended up deciding I would rather die than fail my GCSEs. Um, luckily, of course, I'm here today, so that was not a successful suicide attempt. Episodes of stress-induced psychosis and a further suicide attempt led to Sasha being treated in a psychiatric ward. Now a university student, Sasha uses TikTok to share her experiences with her 60,000 followers. So I'd say it's, it's a blend between education and probably comedy slash dark humour. Reacting to my psych ward notes. PM. After dinner, Sasha was very elated in mood. Elated is such a psych ward word. So I tried to show what the illness can look like. Um, like the reality of living with mental illness, but then also because I'm reflecting on it from the present, it also shows like recovery is possible and you can laugh at even like the darkest, most challenging times of your life. 
The value of mental health support on sites like TikTok is something that's been recognized by the social media platforms themselves. Social media to certain individuals can offer a lifeline of support by putting them in touch with community, giving them, you know, friendship, giving them entertainment in a, in a time of, again, immense isolation. From speaking to Kat and Sasha about their experiences being treated on psychiatric wards, it's clear that it can be really isolating and that social media offers an opportunity for individuals to share their experiences and connect with one another. But when browsing the psych ward content on TikTok, quite a few comments from users question how and why patients being treated inside the wards are allowed to use social media. We wanted to find out whether access to mobile phones and social media really was as tightly restricted as TikTok users generally assume. From our research into the policies of NHS Mental Health Trust in England, we found that while they do acknowledge the potential risk that social media can pose for vulnerable patients, most adult psychiatric wards allow access to mobile phones and social media. In fact, the Care Quality Commission, which regulates health services in the UK, states that access to mobile phones and social media to communicate with friends and family whilst being treated in a psychiatric ward is a right that is protected by the Human Rights Act. Communication with the outside world is so important because otherwise it's just a really insular space, like it's its own world almost. I felt very far removed from reality. While it's easy to find supportive mental health content on TikTok, as with any complex topic, you can also find content that seems less than helpful. I would just wish that people would stop glamorising uh, the wards in particular. I think that's where the real problem is on TikTok. The wards get glamorised so much and I worry that younger people will see them and feel like it's a bit like a holiday camp. I do occasionally get the odd comment that says, um, you know, stop glamorising mental health, it's destroying my family and that kind of thing, which is definitely not much fun to see. And I do then stop to reflect and check, like, uh, is the content that I'm making helpful? Um, but those are quite rare and I usually do address them in like a video response just because I guess it's a very tricky like topic for a lot of people. The proliferation of content on social media that could be seen as harmful has drawn the attention of the UK government. And it's clear that the online world is, is, is wild west with far too, uh, far too few controls. The government is looking to protect social media users from potentially harmful content with the online safety bill, which received its second reading in Parliament earlier this year. So we're asking the platforms to take some responsibility and, and this harms bill does uh, mean that there are actions that we can take to make sure that these platforms behave responsibly um, and actually take care of the people who are accessing their services. The online safety bill is a world first and presents an attempt to target the clear presence of harmful content. However, with the ever-changing nature of social media, some believe it won't be enough. One of the great concerns about the bill is that there isn't enough future proofing into it. And I know that opposition members, uh, both our party, the Scottish National Party uh, and the Labour Party, have flagged this up. Maybe a different approach is needed, one that includes changing the integral way that social media algorithms work. You know, we've shown that you can do algorithms to get people to buy stuff or to see extreme content. What I'd love to see is that are there ways to uh, redesign algorithms around how to um, promote content that actually could be beneficial for someone's mental health and well-being. These algorithms would not only tackle the harmful content online, but also promote the kind of content that people like Kat and Sasha have used as a tool in their recovery. As a scientist and a researcher, that's something I, I would be very interested in actually measuring and exploring. And I think that's something um, we've seen these, plaf these platforms are incredibly powerful for creating so so uh, social interactions. Uh, now I think it's just thinking about how to do that in, you know, in, in order to achieve uh, a benefit and really, I think, benefit around mental health and well-being.